<clears throat> hello, hello. Um, it's a what is it? Tuesday. I'm on spring break, just hanging out. Just wanted to hang out, talk about a few things. But now I'm hotter than hot right now. So we're gonna have a first. We're gonna have a story time about me, and then we're going to what I was actually gonna talk about. Um, so <clears throat> I've been having this issue with my health insurance at work. Um. Um. Um, so here's what's happening. Hey, Lou. Hey, Bertie. So I scheduled a mammogram and I scheduled an appointment to see my doctor. And for some reason, I noticed that they had been, hey, Dion, that they had been canceled for some unknown reason, right? And so then I rescheduled because I said, oh, let me reschedule, right? So I rescheduled. Get this. And then my doctor's office called me and said, hey, um, we're sorry, but we don't accept your insurance. You're not in network. Hello, everybody. I'm telling you all this story, what's going on in my job right now. Um, and so I said, what? And they said, yeah, we haven't accepted this in about three years. I said, well, that's crazy because I've been coming here, right? So then I said, well, let me call my, you, my insurance, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Um, and I look on my information at work, and it seems like the name had changed from the insurance I have. I said, oh, they must have something different. I don't know, right? So then I call and I talk to this lady at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. She's like, I said, they said that, you know, the hospital doesn't accept it or anything. So then she says, well, here, put this app on your phone and then we can figure this out. So I put the app on my phone. I said, she, I said, well, let me look to see what hospitals are in network for this plan I have. So I look at all the names, so I'm pulling it up, and I say, all I see are dialysis centers, and a home health care center is all that's in this network for this insurance. And she says, what? What? I said, can you go look on your end? Because I'm telling you what I see right now. So she looks, she says, oh, no, you're right. So the only thing that is that this covers is dialysis and home health care. I said, oh, it's got to be something wrong here. Now, there have been some issues with insurance at my job in January. So now I reach out to my to HR, and you know you're doing this shit via email. So I said, no, there's something wrong with this insurance. I can't. So this means that I can't see a doctor because I have no fucking coverage, y'all. No coverage. So, so then he's telling, so then I see this. So I talked to somebody at HR. He says, well, that's what you, that's what you took. I said, there's no way I would have taken something like this. All it covers is dialysis. First off, why would you even have this as something that is a viable option for my health insurance? So they're swearing that I, chose this and so therefore i'm stuck with this for this year somebody's gonna fix this shit because in the first place it should have never been something that was available all i did was call myself getting the ppo that i'm supposed to get and you're gonna tell me that that oh well unless there's some life-threatening so i'm paying for insurance that i don't have so god forbid i get sick this year So God forbid I get sick this year because I have no coverage at all, but I'm paying for some. Oh, they're going to fix this shit right now. I don't give a fuck. Somebody's going to fix this because number one, it should have never been something that was part of our benefits package to say, this is the, this is what you're taking, right? <clears throat> so you're going to tell me that? So no, somebody's going to fix this because it didn't say anything like that. And it, I, I would have noticed that. And it should have been a flag. Hey, additional insurance, right? 
I have a PPO plan that was fine. So I'm gonna find I'm like and I'm like, does anybody know if you haven't used your insurance, you're not gonna find out until you try and then they like you can't come. I have no idea why this is an option. I don't even know why it even showed up. Well, they're saying it's coming through Paycom, which is, you know, the service that we use. And saying that I agreed to it or whatever. But my thing is this. All I know is it was a PPO plan. It did not say, hey, this is only for, um, okay, so we're talking about my insurance, D'Angelo, that I don't have. So apparently I'm paying for insurance. And the only thing it covers is for me to go to a dialysis center or for home health care. So the guy just tells me, oh, sorry, we can't do nothing. Sorry, we can't do anything. See, what's going to happen is, it looks like that. My whole thing is, how can you prove that I, that's what I, what I chose when we had an issue with this at the beginning of the year? So how do you know this? that the system just didn't change my stuff? Because I know damn well I didn't take nothing like that. That sounds stupid. And I'm going to go look and see what this says about this. Yeah, that's what they're claiming. I just have to wait until open season. So I have, right? We don't have paper copies. So I don't care. Somebody's going to fix this. Somebody's going to fix it. Because in the first place, it shouldn't even be an option as something that I have an option for my health insurance. It shouldn't even have been an option. So somebody on y'all end didn't take care of it. Because that should have never even came up as an option for my health insurance. Because well, who's... who's been, who, who the fuck gonna use it? I'm not waiting till open season. I'm talking to somebody because I'll be honest, it's April now. You're talking about I have to go through this whole year with no insurance? Then that means I need to look for another school to work for because I can't do that. No, January. Our our enrollments, our new coverage starts in January. Hold on, I think my sh chairs are coming. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. I had to get my, uh, right. 
Right. Right. There was an email confirmation, right? Um, okay, so there was an email confirmation, but all I saw was, okay, I signed up for PPO because that's what it says, but it causes some kind of narrow network. I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? And what that narrow network means is it's for this. So no, somebody's going to fix this because this is insane. This is insane. Yeah, mine is only an email that they send. But the, my, my point is, is that it says PPO. Who thinks that I'm that the PPO has no coverage? What's the point of this? I'm not going to check the coverage for it because I'm going to assume it's still giving me the coverage of a PPO. That's what it's supposed to give me is a coverage of a PPO. Not, oh, by the way, you can only go, we can only use this for dialysis. So, no, I'm about to, <laughs> because there's no way I, I'm, so that means that if I get sick this whole year, I got to pay out of pocket. I'm working every day to pay out of pocket. It'd be one thing if I didn't sign up, but I signed up on time. Now, listen, I'm going to talk to who I'm going to, because what I'm doing now is talking to the HR person. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk to somebody bigger than you because this, it shouldn't even be something that should be um, possible that I can get. This shouldn't even been something that was up for us. So that, so there was, I don't know what the, I think maybe it was about the deductible. And I think that's how I chose it because I wanted to, I was willing to pay for a higher deductible. I don't remember. It was something to do with the deductible, right? So if I chose it, it was based on me fixing my deductible, not, oh, by the way, you know, this is this is how the coverage works. All it said was it was a PPO. Now, I wouldn't. I didn't. It didn't. It you know it said right. It it didn't say hey by the way, this is only going to be used for this. You know it says in network out of network. That's what you're looking for. Okay, so my in network is going to be this. My out of network is going to be that. It didn't occur to me who thinks that you're going to get some insurance through your job that's only for dialysis. No, that's not what that's for. That is an add-on service. And that should have never been listed as the option for my insurance. So now we're going to fix this. Or if I swear to God, if they can't figure this out, I'm going to have to start looking for a new job because I'm not going to go the whole year, I'm gonna go a whole year without me, without medical insurance. It means I can't get my mammogram, can't get my nothing. God forbid I get sick. I mean, I'm pretty damn healthy, but this will be the year that I will get sick, right? Okay, so anyway, oh, okay, I'm over that. Let's 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 just talk. Okay, so let's talk about some things. First off, D'Angelo, Yo Town. Yo town, yo town, your town. That is the wildest thing. Thank you so much. You know, I'm. We gonna figure this out. I know you. You good. You was at. You sleep. Did you have? Do you? Do you go across that bridge? Do you go? Do you go across that bridge to go to work, or is that you know something that? I mean, because I know you wouldn't have been on it at that time of night, because, but do you all cross that bridge? Do you cross that bridge to go to work? That thing looked like matchsticks. When that ship hit it, it looked like virtual matchsticks that just, you haven't heard? Okay. So in Baltimore, a ship hit a bridge. 
and hit hit the bridge and the bridge collapsed like matchsticks it it hit that hit and it was it was over it was over the whole bridge collapsed that looked like some shit out of like a like out of a movie that looked like something out of a movie it looked like something out of a movie I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but baby, that shit was scary to look at. That shit was scary. Right, right. The ship lost power, so it, it was just kind of drifting, right? If if you go watch the uh video of it, it's crazy and scary looking. I'm just like thinking about the poor people that were on that bridge. And I didn't know y'all had a black man. He kind of young too. Honey, he ate them people up. That piece you showed me, D'Angelo. He he ate them news people up. They asked the, the mayor, um, how long do you think it's before we, you know the, the bridge gets rebuilt? He was like, We are not concerned about the bridge right now. The question you should be asking is about the people who we trying to get out this water, not about a damn bridge. This like is whoever said that was like, so that's what you thought you should ask in a tragedy like this. Thank goodness it wasn't rush hour. Thank goodness it was like you know, in the middle of the night because it's bad enough that it happened, but it would have been horrible. It would just been like, it would have just been like, just extra horrendous if it had been rush hour and that bridge was full. Luckily, it, you know, not luckily for the people involved, but it could have been, it could be a, the, it, it, I mean, it, Right. Right. Because you have so much momentum behind you. That's like trucks. Like trucks can't stop on a dime, especially when they're moving because the momentum and the, you know, all of that weight you have behind you and everything. Oh, sorry. My head looks a mess. Well, you now you know that there's going to be some error on that, tr on that, on that. I mean, that whole bridge went down. The whole bridge. That was, whew, that was mind-blowing. Like I said, that's something you see on, um, that's something like you see in a movie, the way that thing looked. Who was filming it, though, that saw all that? Was that something that's just normally filming? Because I'm like, who got the, all that? Because they got the whole thing. Ugh. My hair, my hair, my hair. Anyway, yeah, I mean, whew. Because I'm just like, who was watching from afar? Was this some type of film that was supposed to be happening? Because who actually got, I mean, I'm sure there is something that we don't know that, you know, maybe they film this bridge all the time. Right? Hi, Es. How are you? Yeah, that whew, that was wild. That was wild. Y'all, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> when I went upstairs, it was uh, because FedEx was delivering these uh, chairs for outside. I got those zero gravity chairs for outside. They had a deal on Amazon. I am enjoying my spring break. I'm getting some things done. True, true, true. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, because it seemed like it was like just a normal filming that just happened to capture it which makes sense um 
So I got four chairs for outside the zero gravity chairs. Brandon comes out like, what the hell? I'm like, just take them outside. Just take them to the back. So that's what I was dragging in the house. I got a pink one for me, a purple one for B, and two black ones. You know, I was like, no, you should not get pink. And this ain't got nothing to do with how, you, how the backyard is going to look. And I was like, but it's my backyard. And if I want a pink chair to sit in, I'm going to have a pink chair to sit in. So I got a pink chair. <laughs> so I got me a pink chair. Because I was tired of being outside, like, not comfortable. Because we, we had, like, you know, just basic chairs out there just to sit. I was like, no, I want to be able to sit in my backyard and be a little bit comfortable. So. Right, right. Exactly. I had to think. Exactly. They know. It's my chair. It's my chair. So I got me a paint chair. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm trying to be, because I plan on being in my yard as much as possible this year. I'm just going to be sitting out there. We're just going to sit in the yard. I'm going to give me a little umbrella too, so, because it gets a little hot back there during the early. Because I like to be outside in the morning, you know, and we're east facing. We're on, the, the backyard is on the east side. Now, let's talk about things. Let's talk about Diddy Schneider and all these other things. So, she probably will. She probably will. I'm looking for them some chairs. I'm looking for them some chairs too. Because Bakari needs a bigger chair. I got those little chairs. They too short for him. He needs a little bit bigger chair. So I'm getting them. I'm looking for them little recliners. Right? So right. They said he left the country. Honey, he did a Russell Simmons. Honey, he just doing he just doing what Russell did. Okay. Um, but let's just talk. Let's just say this. Right now, Diddy is regretting strong ar strong arming Cassie for that money to begin with. Diddy is he is regretting saying, you know, when she asked for that money before, he was like, fuck you, bitch. I ain't giving you nothing. Nothing. You lived a good life with me. I that, 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 that was the price I paid for. He was like, I ain't giving you nothing. And then them papers were served. Because I, because honestly, his ego didn't think she'd do it. And his ego didn't think, you know what I'm saying? His ego said she ain't going to tell everything. Because she don't want to tell on herself. And that's probably what he was believing. But... <laughs> we are in a different time now. Ten years ago, it would have been a different way because men were still in control of this narrative when it comes down to doing things like this. Now we are in a time where that shit went south quickly. Right? That shit went south quickly. And so now that's true. He been real quiet ever since then. So that shit went south quickly because, but, but what it speaks on is the entertainment industry as a whole, because it ain't just him and how this has been done for decades. Let's just be honest. What did they used to say? The casting couch. So all of this stuff has been going on forever. It's now a time where people are being punished for using their power and putting people in a space where they feel like they have to do something. Now, I will say this, and we just have to be honest about it. There is complicity involved with the women. And I'm just being honest with you all, because these are grown women who sometimes make a decision just like Cassie did, who stayed in that situation, not only because of the abuse involved, but because of what it gave them. You know, it was a, I give you, you want this? This is what I need. Let's just be honest. It was a quid pro quo on many levels, even though, right? Even though 
you are say, even though these people went along with it, you were now we're willing to say these were people uh, with a certain amount of power lording their power over them. So that's what, so that's the main thing that is being, you know, that that is wrong with the, all of these situations is that these were people with a level of power lording their power over people to get them to do things that they would normally do. Now, were they adults? They absolutely were. Could they have walked away? Yes, they could have, but some of them didn't because this was something that some of them thought this was the only way they could make it in this in, in there. And it might have been, let's just be honest. It might've been, but, but was it right? Absolutely. Right. No, was it right? Absolutely not. Using that is terrible is terrible right just like i watched the nickelodeon thing about um what was going on with nickelodeon with dan schneider and all these other people on those sets and what was some of the things said oh um oh part of it was you know you deal with what's going on because you got to in order to, you know, parents were allowing things to happen because of the fact that they wanted their kids to have these this this opportunity that could take them places beyond this. So were the parents wrong? Yes, but some of it, you didn't, you know, there, there was blurred lines. It wasn't he, you know, he didn't do, there's never anything that's come out about Dan Schneider doing anything sexual to anybody. He was just misogynistic and he was just a real bully. Now, let me say something about this. Let me get here. Looking at Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon, looking at Diddy, let's think about who they were before they became stars, before they got power. Because if you notice, let's just talk about it. It seems like a lot of these people who are involved with these things were people who probably, if they had never gotten this type of power, would have not, who would have been just like nondescript nerds. Let's just be honest. Diddy would have been a nerd. Dan Schneider was an overweight probably was bullied all his life. And so now you give these people a, this type of power and they are like taking advantage of it and getting back some of that, you know, some of that vibe that they wanted, you know, some of that power that they never thought they could have. And now they're taking it and running with it. And it is absolutely terrible. And it's absolutely terrible that this has been condoned for decades, because let's just be honest. This stuff has been going on for a long time. It's just people weren't going to talk about it because A, the, they were going to be blamed. Let's just be honest. With all the stuff that happened with Cosby, all those women were blamed. So people don't want to come forward because of the victim shaming involved. And so that, so all of this has been perpetuated. The difference is now people are listening. And now you can no longer, honey, <laughs> When they got Weinstein, everybody should have been like, oh shit, let me leave the country now. Because if they came, if they took down Harvey Weinstein, they was going to get everybody. It was just a matter of time. Let's just be honest. Because Harvey Weinstein wielded serious power in Hollywood. And they took his ass down and he's now serving 23 years. So, but, but it is a really sad, the things that people, um, Right. R. Kelly. Right. R. Kelly been doing this shit for years, got away with it forever, and it took all this time. And people are still trying to say, oh, it wasn't him. He wasn't. Eh, eh, eh. I'm from Chicago. We all knew he was doing that shit. You know, um, but it's interesting. The people who sit on the other side, like if I hear one more person say they're coming after a black man, they're coming after a black man. No, they're not. You acting like, oh, it's because of black men in power. Absolutely not. This is about dealing with these people, period. Like, you know, it's like black people got these little blinders and shit. You do know they've been, did y'all see Epstein go down? You see they killed his ass. Okay. Do you see what's been going on? It ain't just us they coming for. It ain't just us. They coming for everybody. So everybody, Kevin, did y'all hear that Kevin Spacey's making a comeback? I don't know how I feel about that. 
I don't know how I feel about that. I'm like, hmm. Russell Simmons then left the country, ain't never been hurt. Where Russell at? Ain't he in Thailand or some shit that he ain't no extradition? He's someplace, but someplace where he ain't gonna get. So you know, uh, and look at and if Russell Simmons don't look like he was a nerd growing up, we we know he was. So it feels like all these people have all these it, issues, right? All the people who we're seeing that have been doing this have all these unresolved issues that they were able to act out on people uh, and act out on a on a on a real serious level. If you think about it. It was like, it seems like, um, oh, he did get acquitted. That's right. He did. But I still don't know what I feel about that though. Cause we know he was doing it. Um, the thing is with them is that you can just see, and I'm, because like, for instance, real talk, I, I know somebody in my real life who was doing things like this. He was a drug dealer. Big time drug dealer out here in the suburbs. I grew up with him. He was a couple of years older than me. And the stories that I heard that he was doing to women was disgusting and vile. You know what I'm saying? Because he was dealing. He was. <laughs> shut up. Did they? Um, because he was dealing with, um, you know, hypes. So the things that I heard about that this he was doing, and we were young, we were not. He, it was in our twenties, right? So it's like one. Um, so it's one of those things that happens. Like you can tell that from what I, you know, just by things that I've heard and how it progressed. Because this was a young man that I know for a fact raped a girl when we were. How old were we? We were going into my freshman year, so he was going into his junior because he was two years older than me. So I know that he raped a girl when he was that that age. Right? So, and then the things that he did later on when he became this big-time drug dealer just fell in line with what he did then. And so I feel like, some, you know, it's like... Once they get that power, then they just keep pushing it and pushing it. Let me see how far I can make people go. Let me see what I can make people do. Let me see what I can make people do. And then and get off on it. You know what I'm saying? And and so it's like being put in those positions where there's so much power and where you could just get people to do what you want to. And it what did they say? Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And these are these are stories these are true life stories of that actual sp statement power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely because you can see the the progression of the things of their of how they did things and the abuse that they did on people right when you see What's her name? Aubrey would not sign off because remember him giving them one of the things I saw her talking about this. Remember when he did the whole thing right before any of this came out. Remember right before anything came from out from Cassie, he was supposedly giving them all the rights to their music. And Aubrey from Danity K said she refused to sign it because it was basically an NDA also. So it was like, yeah, I'm gonna give you all the rights to your music, but you got to sign this NDA. And she was like, no, you're not going to do that. After all these years, you have made all this money off of me. And now you're going to make me sign an NDA in order to give me my music. No. So she refused. Now I don't know how many people actually refuse. Oh, yeah. See, the thing was, if you watch Making the Band, the things that she said about him, that Cassie said, and the things that are coming out about him totally makes sense totally makes sense i mean it's like oh okay we get it because you saw that ego back then so you can see an ego unchecked for decades he's been doing that shit for decades now mm -mm. he can you because remember you always heard about them uh those summer parties he had in the hamptons that he them you know million dollar parties it was a whole lot of million dollar shit going on so yeah there's going to be a lot of video surfacing because guess what everybody likes to take video
And I promise you, that's what they went to his houses for. They raided those houses for the video. Trust and believe, because there's a lot of video around. So when... As everybody says, when the feds get involved, they've got you buttoned up at that point. So more than likely, they came in there looking for the videos. Well, you, you know he do. Oh, you you know they do. Now, what's going to happen is, <laughs> this going to be, you know how everybody's like, oh my God, Freaknik. Oh, this is the Freaknik for these celebrities, baby. Right. Yeah, she said they're basically worthless according to her. But really what he was looking for was for them to give him that NDA. Probably because he felt like, uh, you know, he felt like he needed to shut down everybody. I, th You know, more than like he felt like he needed to shut down everybody. Oh, yeah. Homeland Security, FBI get involved. When they step in and you see them raiding and shit like that. Oh, they already got their case buttoned up. They just finishing up. They just they just sewing them buttons on. They finished it. They got they got that button right on the top. They about to like choke your ass with. They got that button and it's about to be like this on your ass. Ah! Right. And see, you know what people have to remember is that sex trafficking is about taking people across state lines, taking people across state lines. So, you know, they got a lot of that shit. They, you know, they got them hoes on, 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 on airplanes and all kinds of shit going on because they could. And, you know, and let me tell you something. I have been around a lot of people in my life, especially in those type of arenas and, um, in those type of, in, 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 um, more of the sex, um, uh, you know, sex, uh, so you find that so many people do so many things now. Yes. Yeah, some of it will be consensual, but a lot of it, because it's them involved because of the level of their, celebrity and things like that there's going to be a lot of stuff where you're gonna see women were forced into doing it you gonna see it and you gonna see them like loving it and and like laughing and joking about what they're doing to women who was the one who the chick was like ex extorting him was trying to get extortion from him was that mystical was it mystical who did that and then filmed himself making her have sex with him because she was trying to extort money from, no, no, she had stolen some money from him and then he made her have sex with him and film the shit. Because everybody got to film this shit. Everybody has to film it because they're so goofy that they need to have, uh, you know, they want to go back and watch it. Hey, man, because you know they didn't have video, you know, and let's go. They just sitting there chilling and watching the videos. So there's probably stacks of videos. That's why they went to two different places because they had to get the stuff over here on the West Coast and on the East Coast. It's not only. Well, you notice. You notice when Mace left, walked away from Diddy. He went straight to the church. That is a telling point right there. I'm just saying. And he's been real quiet. He's been real quiet. Trust and believe. Mace, something Mace was taken advantage of. But you know, of course, it's harder for men to tell that, that story. So. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, he went hard in the paint. Listen, a lot of times when, let's just be honest, when you see somebody who's doing something and all of a sudden they get in a church and they, and they, and even if he wasn't taking advantage, even if he wasn't taking advantage of, he might, he was probably involved in some of the stuff that was going on and his conscience couldn't take it. And that might be true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he been real quiet because he, let's be honest, Mason was one of his boys. 
Mace was was right there, so he's seen a lot, and he's probably been involved in some of it, and that's what made him walk away and turn toward the church. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Usher, yeah, Usher been real quiet lately. If all of a sudden we see Usher. If we see Usher up and you know overseas, you know why. You know why. Listen, it's gonna be a la 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 of them involved because they were all. Think about if you look at all we gotta do is look at the archives, y'all. All you gotta do is see the archives and see how who all was there, and you know certain levels were at certain levels in this situation. You know, there was levels to it, right? We know Jay-Z, Usher, you know, them was on a different level. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know. It's a bunch of them who was involved and they gonna try to, they just praying that they don't get called in. So it's going to be, baby, if Jay-Z is involved, ooh, we. Ooh, we. Ooh, we. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, they come. Mm -hmm. This is going to get really ugly on the black entertainment side. Um Now here's the thing. Um we're going to see how many people still going to go down with the Harvey Weinsteins and stuff. But, you know, let's just be honest. They got rid of Epstein real quick because he was about to tell on everybody. And his names were too powerful for them to let that shit go down. Right? Epstein, they got rid of him. Yeah, Epstein, they got rid of him so quick because they knew his ass was about to tell on everybody. They was like, we got to get rid of him. But even like when I watched the thing on Nickelodeon, what it like I was watching, like I said, Dan Schneider, looking at him, um, which looking at him says something, you know, a lot because he was like very much a nerd, you know, he was overweight his entire life because he's still overweight. So you could tell somebody like him, hell yeah, he's an asshole and he's like m misogynistic and all those things because now he had this power. So all of them, and I mean, like I said, in real life, Puffy would have been one, Diddy would have been some one of them people you've been like, Listen, all of them are scared now about them videos. Because all them, because them videos is about to bring, it's about to go down. See, here's the thing about, I don't think he was an op. I think what he was was somebody who was about to tell on everybody. Because he, he had too many names. Remember, everybody, the big, yeah, yeah, everybody was hanging out with Epstein. Everybody, everybody was hanging out with Epstein, and so what's gonna happen is now all of these people listen, right? Oh, he had made a deal with the feds, and he was about to tell on everybody. That's why they had to kill his ass. That's why they had come on now. Epstein, they killed him. We know this, and. Right? Oh, yeah. And Weinstein, Weinstein for everything that he did. See, the thing is, he was doing all kind of shit, but he sure wasn't filming it. Not like, see, you got to look at how all of them, like, 
Diddy and them roll. Oh, that I'm sure there was video. And Cassie said it was videos. That there was videos of her and other people and all this kind of stuff. And I know they did. Which tells you who they are. Because real people who do that shit don't, <laughs> are all about the discretion of it. But see, what it was with them was that they were getting people that were beneath them, that were weaker, to do those things. So they could say, because what I promise you, I'm sure he was involved in a lot of it, but it was more the voyeuristic side of it. And, you know, and getting people to do, making people, forcing people to do things. You know, forcing people to do things. Let me tell y'all something. Somebody said this. More than likely, right? Uh, more than likely, she had already, her, 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 probably her legal team um, told her, got her with the feds beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be something that's gonna show it's gonna show up on them videos. It's gonna be a lot of people because remember his his parties were legendary. His parties were legendary. And right, and some and but what's gonna happen is we're gonna find out so many of these younger people have been involved that were sexually assaulted and forced to do things they didn't want to. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a whole lot coming out. And I'm sure he videotaped all that because think about how he was on making the band and that, you know, that he was getting off on that. So can you imagine having people doing shit that... <laughs> it's going to go down. Just notice it's about to go down. And it's going to be ugly. And people go. I predict. I give next two months. We're going to see. We're going to hear a lot of people talking. Let's watch the next two months and see how these older celebrities, black celebrities are acting, kind of things they're putting out there, how quiet they are. They're going to be quiet because they're going to be praying that their name don't get involved. <laughs> it's it's going to be real quiet because everybody is waiting to see where that shoe going to drop. Shoot, it's going to be. They gonna be sitting there like that, and the ones that didn't fuck around with him are going to be like whatever. And I'm wait, and you know what everybody's waiting for? They waiting to get confirmation on TD Jakes. If this shit go down with TD Jakes, baby, everybody is waiting to see if TD Jakes' name about to get thrown under that bus. Baby, if it does, I'm going to need his people not to be allowing this because I cannot stand it. Let me tell you something I cannot stand. When a, pa when a minister does something like this, gets caught up in something like this or whatever, adultery, whatever, whatever, and everybody make excuses for him. Well, you know, he's a man. He's got, no, you a man of God. You supposed to have, you supposed to have, you're supposed to handle yourself at a different level because you are claiming to be a man of God. So when a man of God does the same things that everybody, don't tell me you weak. You, what you telling me is, is that then as far as I'm concerned, why would I, why would I listen to you? Because you can't even handle your so, so how can you, how can you minister to me with my, with my weaknesses and my, when you can't even, when you can't even deal with the, the weaknesses of the flesh or whatever, please God, if T.D. Jace is involved, his people better stand down and don't make excuses for him. Because I get so tired of people making excuses for bad behavior because somebody is a minister. I got to agree with you with that one too. You know what I'm saying? But 
Let's stop doing that. Let's let's hold them to that higher standard because that's what because that's what they put themselves at. If you put yourself on a pedestal, because that's what they're doing, then then be worthy of the pedestal you want to be put on. Don't fuck. Mm -mm. I know some. I, look, I know I'm piss some people off with that shit, but it's the truth. Don't put yourself. Don't don't put yourself on a pedestal and say you're this person and you're ministering to people. And it, but then but then when you do some shit, hey. I'm just a man like everybody else. Just a man makes a mistake, right? Right? Just being a human is one thing. Continuing to fall on that sword is another. Because everybody does make mistakes, right? Everybody does. But when you continuously doing shit, that ain't a mistake. That's a that's a decision. So it's one thing like, oh my God, I was weak. I did this. I'm repenting. Please, please forgive me. Please forgive me. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. One time, maybe two. But if you are involved continually in some bullshit, you are no, don't, 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 ah, no, I call bullshit on it. So even though I know that will upset people, but that's just the reality of it. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. My, my, uh, my uncle and the, the fortune teller. And yes, um, and yes, I had an uncle who was a for real fortune teller, had a crystal ball and everything, did fortunes, red palms, did all of that. He said, he said, the biggest scam is, is religion. Right. It's, yeah. And the, the prosperity, the prosperity gospel ones really make you go. But I'm saying that. When you are, when you are doing it, cause let's just be honest. It is when the things come out, you'd be like, damn, now that, now let me say this. Some people do have a true calling and they are of the word and they are of the spiritual. They are of God, but then you got some that are in it for what it is to them and what they can get and manipulate people because too often people do things based on what it's going to how what it's going to get i feel like this when you try to live in million dollar houses and you are the minister of a church and you you got private planes you try, you you know you need a private jet creflo and you riding the, you got all these cars lined up i'm confused I'm so confused. I really am. I am so confused on what exactly are we, what exactly are you telling me? Um, because what it smacks of to me are the money lenders in the temple. That's what it smacks of to me. It smacks of the money lenders in the temple. Ooh, my hair's falling now. Okay, I haven't combed my hair in a day, a few days. Stop it, Louise. Okay, you're okay. Yeah. All right. So let me go on and try to deal with this insurance issue because it's uh, three o'clock. I still reach out to somebody. Okay. Thank you all for our conversation. We'll have another one. I'm off this week. I'll come on another day early, you know, in the middle of the day or so. Give y'all a little break at work. Thank y'all for hanging out as always. Let me get out of here and uh, um, do something. All right. Bye-bye.